great white shark. They are the largest predatory fish on the planet, and as such stand at the very top of the food chain in the oceans. They are built for killing, and without a doubt one of the most successful predators of our time. Despite this, they are also deeply misunderstood animals. Movies like Jaws turn sharks, in particular great whites, into bloodthirsty calculated man-eaters, and probably into one of the most feared animals in the world. But do they really deserve their bad reputation, and what even makes them such dangerously effective predators? That's what we will discuss today. But before we get started, I want to take 30 seconds to talk about this video's sponsor. Brilliant. If you're like me and love science, if you love to learn more about the world around us and how it works, but you don't necessarily like to read boring textbooks to do so, then Brilliant might be for you. There are over 50 courses from all areas of math, science and technology on an interactive library of knowledge, presented in a fun and engaging way. They cover both fundamentals and more advanced concepts, and it's all very digestible. In the course Physics of the Everyday Alone, you will learn about solar power and nuclear power, seasons and weather systems, tides and toilets. Brilliant really has something for everyone. And the way the lessons are designed means you don't even need a lot of time. A few minutes are enough to learn something new. If that sounds at all interesting, head over to brilliant.org FIM to sign up for free and find out more. Nobody can deny, great whites are dangerous animals. They are highly specialized killing machines and perhaps the ultimate predators of the ocean. But are they also the savage man-eaters many people think they are? Statistically, yes, great whites are the most dangerous predators for humans in the ocean. In the US, where most human shark encounters are recorded each year, sharks have bitten around 650 people between 2000 and 2015, 15 of them fatally. Tiger, bull and great white sharks are responsible for the largest number of these shark bites. But as tragic as each of these incidents is, do these statistics really paint the picture of sharks as fearsome man-eaters? Great whites are some of the largest predators on the planet. With an average weight of more than half a ton and an average length of 4 to 5 meters, top speeds of almost 60 km per hour and perhaps the strongest bite in the animal kingdom, no animal on their menu is safe. If that would include humans, the number of deaths caused by shark bites every year would certainly not be single digit, but probably go into the thousands considering the number of people that visit the beach year round. In the US alone it's around 50 million people per year, even though almost the entire US coast is shark territory. With this much potential prey, the few dozen shark bites that are recorded every year worldwide don't really support the picture of the savage man-eating killer. Because for a great white, a human in the water is about as helpless as a fish on land, and certainly easy prey. They are, after all, adapted to hunt prey that is much bigger and more difficult to take down. One of the most amazing of these adaptations is the battery of senses they have at their disposal. Their sense of smell is probably the most famous of them all. Even though this ability is often exaggerated, most likely to make them even more terrifying, it is still unparalleled in the oceans. They can detect specific chemicals, such as blood proteins, in minute concentrations, possibly as low as one part per 10 billion. That's the equivalent of five drops of blood in an Olympic-sized swimming pool. If the currents carry the particles in the right direction, this means they can detect wounded prey from as far away as half a kilometer. One of their senses that is often overlooked and is perhaps even more accurate is their sense of hearing. It is much more sensitive than that of humans and is especially adapted for detecting low frequency sound below 40 Hz, including infrasound. This allows them to hear the low frequency pulses caused by tiny water vibrations struggling fish or marine mammals make, and over great distances. Because sound travels faster and further in water than in air, great whites can therefore hear the movement of potential prey from sometimes over a mile away. Despite the reduced visibility underwater, the great white's eyesight is equally good. They can probably see as well underwater as we can above the surface and even in color, a rare ability in sharks which are typically colorblind. Additionally, they possess the same reflective layer behind the retina that cats do. This allows light entering the eye to strike the photoreceptors twice, which gives sharks the ability to make out their prey in almost perfect darkness. But aside from these three senses that almost all vertebrates have, and which are already highly developed in sharks, they also possess two additional complementary senses. The first is the lateral line system, a sensory organ you can find in almost all fish. It consists of a series of fluid-filled canals running just under the skin, along the flanks of the body, and over the entire head. With these canals, they are able to feel low-frequency pressure changes in the water. 
This gives them yet another way to detect fine water movements caused by the swimming motions of nearby prey. And finally, there is the ability of electroreception. This is a trait that is almost unique to sharks and their relatives, and it allows them to detect the weak electric fields produced by the bodies of all living organisms. Through a series of specialized sensory cells connected to the surrounding water via over a thousand jelly-filled pores distributed over the shark's head, the sharks are able to locate prey from about a meter or three feet away. This helps a shark keep track of its target just before it bites it, when it's hidden in the blind spot in front of its nose, or when it's otherwise hidden from view. They probably also use it for navigation by orienting along Earth's magnetic field. All this makes great white sharks without a doubt one of the most dangerous and successful predators on Earth, and a human would certainly be easy prey for them. And yet, the number of fatal shark attacks by great whites is minimal. Almost every animal that you would think could kill a human kills more people every year than sharks. Lions? Check. Tigers? Check. Wolves? Check. Snakes, snails, elephants, dogs, jellyfish, hippos, bears, bees, scorpions, cows, crocodiles, even horses. It is more likely you will drown before ever getting bitten by a shark. Even getting hit by lightning is more likely. One reason is that we are simply a too bony meal for a shark. Because great whites have a very slow digestion, by having a comparably high metabolism, they are actually very picky eaters. They need gourmet food. Prey with a high fat bone ratio, like marine mammals, which have a thick layer of blubber. Humans simply have too little fat and too much muscle and bone to be a viable food source. If anything, we would probably cause them serious indigestion, at which point they would likely just vomit us back into the ocean. Sharks can do that. It's called gastric eversion. It's when a shark turns its stomach inside out, extending it from its mouth and ejecting unwanted contents like bones or low quality meat off the stomach to make room for better food. But if they don't view us as prey, then why do shark bites happen? There's a lot of misinformation about this too. For a long time we thought that sharks simply mistake us for their usual prey. This however seems unlikely to be the case, given their incredible array of senses. The attack pattern also doesn't support this notion. Great whites usually attack seals with tremendous force and speed, often catapulting themselves up to 3 meters or 10 feet out of the water. This is not how attacks on humans usually take place. In most cases, the sharks approach at a relaxed pace, take a bite or two and then swim off again. New research on shark behavior suggests that these bites are, in most cases, simply the result of their curiosity. Just like most animals that have almost nothing to fear in their environment, sharks are very curious animals. When they see something that they don't know, they like to investigate it. And since they neither have arms nor legs, the only thing left that they can use to get a feel for something is their mouth. A bite tells them everything they need to know about an object. So if anything, it's this curiosity what makes them dangerous to us, and not their lust for human flesh. The second reason why shark bites happen is a similarly normal behavior for wild animals. Competitive behavior. In the wild, the strongest, most dominant individuals tend to get the best food. And while sharks don't have territories in the sense that terrestrial predators do, they are still very territorial. Especially in areas where a lot of sharks congregate, for instance around a whale carcass, the dominance hierarchy needs to be established to determine who eats first. Great whites do this in a number of ways. Despite sharks generally being lone predators, we have already identified at least 20 distinct social behaviors that help them establish social rank and avoid physical conflict. Parallel swimming, for instance. Here, two great whites swim side by side to figure out who is bigger. Another way is a literal splash fight. Two or more sharks swim to the surface and splash each other with their tails. The shark that makes the most or biggest splashes wins. Great whites even play chicken. They swim at one another and the first to swerve loses. In rare cases, if all these peaceful methods have proved futile, they attack each other to ultimately figure out who's stronger. Once the dominance hierarchy is established, feeding is generally orderly and well behaved, as each shark patiently waits for its turn. These complex social behaviors show that great whites aren't just dumb killing machines, but in fact very intelligent animals. Humans that invade their habitat can sometimes similarly be seen as competitors, especially in the vicinity of large schools of fish or seal colonies. In rare cases, this might provoke a bite, to try to chase us off. The sharks almost never bite to kill can also be seen in the shark bite statistics, as the number of fatal bites is very low compared to the number of non-fatal ones. Even in cases that unfortunately ended in death, it was usually the consequences of the bite, most commonly the blood loss, that were the cause of death, and not the attack itself. 
because for the fragile human body even a single shark bite will of course often result in serious injury or even loss of limbs. Hopefully by now it has become clear that great whites are not the bloodthirsty savage man-eaters film and media typically make them out to be. But we also mustn't forget that sharks are wild animals, predators, and even though we are not on their menu, there's always a risk involved when you invade their habitat. If you are willing to look beyond their bad reputation, they are actually very fascinating animals. For instance, great whites have extreme regenerative abilities. Their wounds not only heal extremely quickly, they are also able to survive injuries that would kill just about any other animal. But this ability goes beyond the physical. Earlier this year, a team of scientists has completed its task to decode the entire genome of the great white. Their genetic code has revealed a surprisingly high number of genome stability genes. So genes that are tied to DNA repair and DNA tolerance. These genes help to repair and prevent copy mistakes and random mutations inside the DNA that could otherwise lead to abnormal changes in those cells. These finds seem to confirm a long-standing suspicion that great whites are extremely resilient against cancer and other age-related diseases. This, however, doesn't mean that eating these sharks will somehow give you the same abilities. Sorry, China. Much of what we have covered this far is of course not necessarily unique to great whites and can be said about many of the roughly 500 different shark species, but one characteristic of them is much more unique and clearly makes them stand out among other large species such as tiger and bull sharks, and that's their ability to elevate their core body temperature above that of the water. Unlike most other sharks, which are, like basically all fish, cold-blooded, great whites and six other species, all of the order of mackerel sharks, are able to achieve a kind of warm-bloodedness. By holding the body temperature constant at around 25 degrees Celsius or 77 degrees Fahrenheit, they are able to operate in both warm and very cold waters and hunt where other large sharks can't. But how does it work? In most sharks, the powerful red swimming muscles are located along the flanks, directly below the skin. The big dorsal aorta, the central running artery, supplies them with the necessary oxygen through a handful of arterial branches. Afterwards, the carbon dioxide rich blood is pumped back towards the heart. Most of the metabolic heat sharks produce is generated in these muscles while swimming. But because water conducts heat 10 to 20 times better than air, this heat is normally immediately lost to the environment, resulting in no significant temperature increase. The great white, however, has evolved in such a way that it can greatly reduce this heat loss and thereby maintain an elevated body temperature. This is only possible through a series of modifications to the structure of the swimming muscles and the circulatory system. The first important change is that the red swimming muscles are buried deep within the shark's body, on each side of the backbone. There's also much more of it. Red swimming muscle, compared to the predominantly white muscle of cold-blooded fish, is much more powerful and produces more heat as a result. It does, however, require much higher metabolism and, more importantly, a greater supply of oxygen. The additional oxygen is provided by enlarged arteries along the flanks of the fish that redirect blood inward through a dense bundle of smaller arteries and veins. This fine network is called Reed Mirably, which roughly translates to wonderful net. The central arrangement of the swimming muscles means that far less of the red muscle mass has direct contact with the surrounding water, which reduces the immediate heat loss. But much more important is the extensive counter-current heat exchange, enabled by the dense array of veins and arteries that supply the muscles with oxygen. Through the countless small arteries and veins that pass very close to one another carrying blood in opposite directions, the retia act as heat exchanger. Because of the intimate countercurrent blood flow, most of the heat is transferred from the veins to the arteries and cycled back into the muscles that produced it originally. In contrast to a concurrent flow system, where the continued heat exchange between two liquids will eventually lead to an equilibrium that is somewhat in the middle of the two original temperatures, in a countercurrent system, the exchanged heat is constantly carried away, pushed forth by new cold blood. This means the upper stream will always have the lower temperature, and more heat can be exchanged. Here an equilibrium is only reached when nearly all the original temperature difference was exchanged. This makes countercurrent exchange so effective, as nearly all the metabolic heat in the venous blood is transferred to the arterial blood, thus conserving most of the muscle's temperature. This is how great whites maintain a higher body temperature, and because of it they are able to inhabit a much wider range of environments, with varying water temperatures. The additional red muscle mass makes them powerful swimmers that can travel great distances fast and effortlessly, even into colder waters, where the inner heat warms their brain, muscles and stomach, and therefore allows them to catch even swift and agile prey like marine mammals that would be inaccessible for any cold-blooded predators. 
As you can see, great white sharks, or sharks in general, are truly fascinating animals, and more than just terrifying sets of teeth. As apex predators, they are also extremely important for the ecosystem. While they sit on top of the food chain, the health of the ecosystem actually rests on their shoulders. They keep the balance, and without them, the ocean's ecosystem as we know it would collapse. That's why protecting these animals is very important. Of the approximately 500 species of sharks, over 100 are threatened, some even critically. This includes great whites, various species of hammerheads, whale sharks and basking sharks, to name a few. But this isn't really surprising, given how many sharks are still killed each year in attempts to make beaches safer, as bycatch by commercial fishing vessels, as trophy catches, and for shark fin soup, a popular delicacy in China. Only a few years ago it was estimated that the number of sharks that are killed each year is likely between 100 and 250 million. That's a shocking 11,000 that are killed every single hour, hour after hour, day after day, year after year. And it will not stop until almost every shark in the ocean is dead, unless we do something about it. Thankfully, a lot has already been done in the past years and decades, but unfortunately shark conservation depends on public acceptability, and as long as sharks are still viewed by many as savage man-eaters, conservationists will continue to fight an uphill battle to protect these magnificent creatures. Thanks again to Brilliant for sponsoring this month's video. If you want to support what I do here, please use the link in the description to sign up with Brilliant for free. And if you like it, you can also use the link to get 20% off your premium subscription. Thanks for watching.